We got the package, baby! Customs Kazakhstan defeated. <laughs> we have pinky and brain bag. Yes. We just went up to the customs office and they asked like, okay, what is the package? Drones? I just said, it's just drone parts. It's actually not working. Like they won't fly because there's no batteries in here. So technically these don't fly as they are in the package. These are just drone parts. It's not a drone, just drone parts. And he's like, ah, oh, okay, here you go. Nothing to pay, nothing to do. Give us the package, good to go. Thank you, customs office. Thank you, guys. And I'm up here. Everything laid out for a crazy day. Oh, God, that box is really heavy. Okay. Hey, do you remember us, Bumblebee? <laughs> it's been a while. And look what we did. We put the panniers on last night because we were that prepared. We are super ready to hit the road for sure. Don't forget the disc lock. I heard horror stories of people when they're like, pack everything up, get everything going, then they start riding and then clunk, the disc lock hits here and the whole thing topples over. Now that we don't have water bottles anymore because we've switched to the camelbacks camelbacks is that what you call them yeah. water carriers water bags the moscow moto ones that come in the backpack now i've got the space where i can put my disc lock here nice and convenient i love gobi <laughs> The Wi-Fi on our computer is broken. <laughs> when we want to upload videos, we had to physically like bring it into the hostel and connect it with the Ethernet cable up to the router. So basically this morning, Lavi just dropped off the computer, set a bunch of videos to upload and then just left it there. It's very important in the morning that you check that the time and date on every GoPro is correct. Otherwise, syncing them later is going to be a big challenge. 6.22 a.m. Perfect. Upload complete. <laughs> the Ethernet cable. This computer is like 12 years old. Look at this. Okay, time to get changed, hey? <laughs> Bumblebee is alive! Three, two, one. Yep. All right. That's it. Ready to hit the road! Good morning world! Welcome back to our circumnavigation around the globe by motorcycle! We're here in the city of Almaty in Kazakhstan and we got up nice and early this morning. We set the alarm at 5.15. Are you proud of us? <laughs> it's been a while since we've woken up that early but we've got good reason to wake up early because today we are heading out of the city and towards the border to Kyrgyzstan. So we are here in Almaty and today we're going to be taking this road over the border to Kyrgyzstan and then this road towards Lake Isikul. Andre, the local motorcyclist that we've been hanging out with over the past week, <laughs> yeah, that's good. he advised us to get up very early to head out towards the border to Kyrgyzstan because he said that once it hits rush hour all the traffic is going to go that way that road is going to be completely blocked traffic jams as far as the eye can see because pretty much just over the other side of the border to Kyrgyzstan is the capital of Kyrgyzstan Bishkek as you can imagine the road between them can get really busy by the way Andre told us as well that this pipeline here is a gas line 
which is overground and connects all houses with gas. Here in the city, everybody's heating their houses and cooking with gas. I mean, it doesn't matter what streets you go down, you've just got this pipe on the left and right in front of every single house. A lot of towns and cities here in Kazakhstan, they don't even have a gas or a heating system. Most people here are still heating with wood. Yeah, so I guess despite the massive eyesore everywhere, it is pretty convenient for the people, hey? Totally. Now that we've got the suspension fixed, it's <laughs> like speed bumps are a bit less of a challenge now. Before it was like gudug gudug and a massive bounce. But we've got to be careful with this new rear shock because I want this new rear shock to last until we get back home. For sure. Better last until we get back home. Better last. <laughs> <laughs> but thanks so much again, Motorcycle World, the dealership that sponsored us with Bumblebee in the beginning in my hometown, Northampton. Those guys are absolutely amazing that they sent out this shock and got it to us before we left the city because now we can continue on our way just nice and smooth i love yeah. it all the way back to england so after entering kyrgyzstan we are going to be heading to kyrgyzstan's most famous attraction isik cool lake a giant giant salt lake in the mountains and hopefully if it works out we're going to be having a beautiful wild camp right next to it so it's about two and a half hours to the border and then another two and a half hours to the lake in total 240 miles it's already 6 49 so better hit the road let's go all right here we go joining the chaos it doesn't look so bad at the moment hey no i think we've done it right yeah fingers crossed we can get to the border without a crazy traffic jam <laughs> So we've hit a bit of road under construction and look at how dusty it is here. Yeah, it's really super dry. It's giving a good test to the shock, eh? Yes, feels good. Yeah, the shock's doing great. I mean, it's just amazing that we can go on like roads like this and it's, it's pretty smooth. Yeah. I forgot what it was like to have a working rear shock. <laughs> Now I feel like we can tackle some trails again. Oh yes, I'm up for it. So we're getting pretty close to the border to Kyrgyzstan now. You can see just in the distance some snowy peaks, the mountains of Kyrgyzstan. So we're just going to find a petrol station, use up a little bit more of our Kazakh money, Tenge. And this border town is called Korday and it's pretty much the first thing we've seen since we left Almaty because in between has just been basically just a desert. Yeah, HL, this one here. HL, okay. Mm -hmm. The last petrol station in Kazakhstan. Here in Kazakhstan, they have the cheapest petrol we have ever seen in our lives. It's something like 30 to 35 pence per liter. Yeah, which is it's just absolutely crazy. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, thank you. Yeah? Sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. Spasiba. I think he said like, oh, I'm just going to do these guys and then I'll come to you. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Didn't understand the word, but I think that's the, that's the gist. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay, this is it. You can see up ahead control point yeah do you think we should go in this line or on that line oh oh it's green this line obviously <laughs> <laughs> actually it doesn't look too bad here at all i mean yeah. how many cars are there one two three four five and then us it's okay here mm -hmm. should i just go to the front yeah perhaps yeah let's go let's go to the front I 
mean, at the moment, this is like a a closed gate. Is it, is it okay? This one? This one? This one? <laughs> yeah. Okay, I don't know exactly. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, okay. <laughs> there we go. There we go. <laughs> yeah, right. Thank you. Okay, I think we'll turn off the cameras now, shall we? Yeah. Here? There? Here? Okay. 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 Oh, okay. Oh. Okay. okay. Yeah? All right, let's get this done. Well, there we go. Literally 10 minutes and everything is done on the Kazakh side. We just had to give our passports, get them stamped. And then a guy came over and just asked us if we had money or drugs. I said, I wish, but I have neither. So now I think that's pretty much it. We just need to give the little slip of paper that proves that we've done these bits to this fella. And then we should be through to the Kyrgyzstan side. 20 minutes later. So that's it. We just crossed through into Kyrgyzstan and it's only 20 past 10. Can you believe it? Wow. Absolutely amazing. That was a super fast, super easy process. Wow. So we're just stopping here because here there is a money exchange and a place where we can get a local Kyrgyzstan SIM card. So we're just going to stop here, see if we can grab those things before we make our way into Kyrgyzstan properly. So I'm just leaving Lavi there to look after Bumblebee. So let's see if we can do it all here. Uh, th thank you in Kirk. Chong Rahmat. Chong Rahmat. Okay. Germania. Uh, Angle. Angle. Okay. Chong Rahmat. Rahmat. Bye bye. Okay, money exchange done. That was really, really easy, really fast. So let's find a SIM card. Oh, actually, I think the same place sells SIM cards. Uh, SIM cards? SIM card, ah, oh, cool. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, mission successful. Managed to get a SIM card. So they told me it's unlimited for a week and it only cost 250 Kyrgyzstan SOM which is only £2.24 What? Amazing! We're only going to be in Kyrgyzstan for around a week so we can just have unlimited data the whole time upload plenty of YouTube videos We've also got a whole bunch of local currency which is awesome and that should do us for like the whole time we're here really yeah. I think I exchanged about £150 worth yeah. so plenty Plenty I like this hat. <laughs> it's a nice hat. Yeah. I'm really, really happy how smooth the border crossing was and as well how easy it was to pick up these things and exchange the money. Amazing. It's like, it's quarter to 11 really and we have already ridden 130 miles and crossed a border and got a SIM card and exchanged our money. I think this is the most successful day we ever had. This is like German level productivity, hey? Nice. <laughs> okay, so now we have just um, a little appetizer. I bought some potatoes yesterday and we will have it with this um, funny bowl. It's like... <laughs> is that what you call it? Is that the official name? No, the official name is actually Kurt. 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 It's, like it's a dried uh, milk. Uh, milk gets bad but not bad uh, okay it's like it could, sour sour yeah, milk sour yeah okay sour milk dried it's a very very strong taste it's very sour salty yeah and i think it fits very well with potatoes well you have to eat it like this together does it work very nice ah mm -hmm. all right i'm down let's do it <laughs> hi <laughs> hey <laughs> out and on our way i don't know if there is actually a way out no, nope, there is no way out here. Back to the border. <laughs> okay, yep. Okay. Yeah, that's a busy car park here. Andre told us 
doesn't matter what you do don't park here on the streets because the police will come straight away and find you yeah this is like all of this is like a no stopping zone but then apparently the police are also waiting right here because after the no stopping zone yeah there's a stop sign straight after it's true and apparently the police are always looking here i think they actually have a police station right there so everybody has to go to the line okay stop okay and go and go andre told us that this is just like a money-making scheme basically they just want to get all the people they're coming into the country just drive straight in and boom hit with a kyrgyzstan fine <laughs> <laughs> look there it's a petrol here <laughs> there you go look at that there's kyrgyzstan petrol station anyway we did our last fuel up in kazakhstan we have a full tank we can do 250 miles and we've got a lot of kyrgyzstan to explore so i just had a look and this is country number 27. Yay! Welcome to Kyrgyzstan. <laughs> Amazing. I'm just so happy that everything worked so well. After we did the whole Russian bit, pretty much everything from now on is going to be like a breeze compared to being like pulled out of the queue, having to do an interview. I mean, this one was like barely more than crossing from England to France. It was yeah. like passport stamp. We didn't have to do a temporary import permit which is amazing so it was literally just passport control check the bike going out and then passport control check the bike going in so yeah that's absolutely amazing slower here yeah mm -hmm. don't want to get in trouble on our first day in the no. country hey no and there's the police on the oh. other side oh yeah did you see them yep apparently it's the watermelon season here in kyrgyzstan because we're just seeing tons and tons and tons of roadside watermelon sellers. Oh, they have a KFC here. <laughs> they have a KFC here as well. <laughs> there you go. KFC Kyrgyzstan. Is that another police car? Yep. Tons and tons of police controls here that we've seen so far. Yes, at least 15. So we're just coming around the outskirts of Bishkek here. So pretty much over there, just in front of the line of mountains, that is the capital of Kyrgyzstan, Bishkek. And in the city of Bishkek, there is a million people. And in the whole of Kyrgyzstan, there is six and a half million. And it's pretty much the only big major city in the country but we are not headed for Bishkek this time we're avoiding the big city because we're heading for the countryside we're heading for the mountains and perhaps swimming in a lake look this town is called Tokmok Tokmok there's a big fighter jet on the way in there you go what a welcome eh so we're just making it a bit of a detour now we're going to see our first attraction here in Kyrgyzstan, which is an ancient minaret called Burana. Here we are, we have arrived. Up ahead is the ancient minaret of Burana. So yeah, let's go park up and find out more, hey? Yeah, totally. How do you like my outfit, which I have chosen? <laughs> it's practical, that's what I can say, it's practical. You know, you're not gonna get burnt shoulders, that's nice. You got your nice socks on to prevent blisters. You got your hat on. You are absolutely the cutest. Bye Bumblebee! Bye bye Bumblebee! So we're using this historical visit to have a little bit of time off the bike today because the bike was recording a temperature of 37 degrees before we stopped so it is incredibly hot right now it's mad hot so yeah a little bit of time off the bike shorts and t-shirt and see a beautiful part of Kyrgyzstan history almost forgot to pay hello two person thank you oh, oh, thank you there you go look at that Really nice design, you know, the layout of the bricks. 
So this is the ancient minaret of Burana and it's actually an Islamic minaret for a mosque and it's the last surviving remnant from the ancient city of Balasagun. Balasagun? Balasagun. And this city dates from the 9th century and this tower was built in the 11th century. It's the oldest surviving architectural construction in Central Asia. The tower actually used to be 45 meters tall, but an earthquake in the 15th century, basically half of the tower collapsed. So now the tower stands at 25 meters high, but it's still amazing after nearly a thousand years that this tower is still here. Mind blowing. That's crazy. It's so cool, we can actually go inside the minaret. Oh my god. <laughs> Whoa. That is steep and dark. Wow. Okay, I just had to take off my sunglasses. That's amazing. Look at the way that they've constructed this. This is kind of what I used to do with Jenga bricks when I was younger. Okay. <laughs> you be careful, my love. Huh? Oh my goodness. Oh my god, this is so steep. I wow! Feel like I walk with my arms as well. Yeah, just look down there. I guess if you fall, you just have to like stick your arms out. Oh yeah, look, there's a little little window for a nice view. Oh my god! <laughs> Literally walking on my hands, hands and feet. Wow, I did not like that staircase. <laughs> Look at this view. Wow. And over here behind us, got all the high mountains that I really hope we're going to pretty soon because the whole time today, I thought we'd be riding straight up into the mountains. So hopefully after this, we're gonna be starting to climb. Goes. Literally the staircase is only wide enough for like one person so we just have to hope there's nobody else trying to come up. Are you going backwards or forwards? I, I, I started backwards but now I'm forward. I really don't like heights so <sighs> not cool but it was a nice view. Are you going the right way? We're going up now. <laughs> oh yeah, I don't like this. This bit. Ah, oh, there we go. <laughs> Woo. Hey! Uh, not doing that again. Welcome to Kyrgyzstan. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> I really like your hat. Yes, Kalpak. Kalpak. Kyrgyz traditional. Okay. Yes, okay. Forma, forma, okay. traditional. Yes. Wow. Yeah, your boots are amazing. Yes. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> What's your name? Aydar. My name Aydar. is Aydar. 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 Nice to meet you, Aydar. Yes. Very nice, nice to, to meet, meet you. you. I am horseman. You are horseman. Eagle man. Eagle man. Yes, horseman, archer. Ah, Horse wow. big archer. Oh. Cool. This town, Makambaywa. Next to the lake. Yes, it's lake. cool. Yes, yes. Okay. In tourists, as eagle show. Oh. Ah, yes. yes. Facebook, yes, Facebook. 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 Do, yes. you have, do you have Instagram? Instagram, yes. Instagram. Yes. Oh, nice. Be beautiful. Oh, cool. Very, very yes. beautiful. So we're just having a little snack under the tree before we get back on the road. A couple of days ago, Andre picked us up and took us to like a bazaar, like a food market, the Green Bazaar. He treated us to a whole bunch of awesome stuff. These are macadamia nuts and they are so super cool and tasty and you open them with something like that how <laughs> cool like is that? a little key almost yeah let's put it in and they're so incredibly tasty yeah, it's really interesting because after we picked up all these nuts at the market, we looked them up online and actually macadamia aren't from this area at all. So the macadamia tree is actually native to Australia and they're mostly grown in Hawaii. Can you believe it? And then we find them like in a market in the middle of Almaty. How crazy is that? But I think these are literally one of the tastiest nuts I've ever had. And they did a study on the genetic diversity of macadamia trees. And they found that all of the farmed trees that are currently out in the world 
pretty much stem from a single batch of seeds that they took from a single area of land in Queensland, Australia. So they can trace it back even to the very first cultivated tree in like the 1850s, I think it was. How crazy is this world, hey? How crazy. They must have picked a good one because it's really good. <laughs> and we also got from the market uh, a whole bag of pistachio nuts. They're both really, really tasty nuts, but actually I think maybe even pistachios are slightly nicer than macadamias. Mm -hmm. well, they're absolutely both so, so delicious. And then also we got like <laughs> a whole bag of these milk balls, these salty milk balls. I don't even know what's, oh yeah, kurt. Because he said it's like kurt, like kurt Cobain. So thanks Andre, this is some really nice roadside snacks. Mm -hmm. Looks like the start of the mountains. Yeah, absolutely stunning. The mountains have really started to spring up around us now. There's a giant eagle. Awesome. Amazing. So now we're starting to get out into the hills, into the countryside of Kyrgyzstan. I think it's about time to tell you guys a little bit more about country number 27 on our journey around the world. Kyrgyzstan. Yo! So Kyrgyzstan has been at the crossroads of many great civilizations as part of the Silk Road. And this area has been home to many different nomadic groups, including the Turkic nomads. And then in the 13th century, it was conquered by the Mongol Empire. And then much later in 1876, it became part of the Russian Empire. And then eventually the Soviet Union in 1936. After the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991, a democratic government was established. So the word Kyrgyz comes from the Turkic word meaning we are 40, believed to be referred to the 40 clans of Manas, a legendary hero who united 40 regional clans in the area, and a tale which is told in the epic poem Manas which apparently is one of the longest poems in the entire world with apparently something like half a million lines. So it really is like an epic poem. <laughs> wow. And it's really interesting as well about the Kyrgyzstan flag because on the flag is a sun with 40 rays of light coming from it. And that 40 rays is also in a reference to these 40 clans of Manas. And the other emblem on the flag is actually the top of a yurt which is basically an homage to the nomadic people that live here oh look there's a yurt just there <laughs> that's good timing so it's really nice that on the flag you have a reference to the legendary formation of the Kyrgyz people and you also have a reference to their ancient way of life which has been going on for thousands of years yeah I like it as well look, there's a whole load of like cafes which are all of them yurts yeah cool that's awesome so the mountain range that dominates Kyrgyzstan and the mountain range we're actually heading towards right now is called the Tien Chan mountain range and there are super high mountains here the highest mountain in Kyrgyzstan is called Pubado and it is 7,000 and 439 meters high. There we go, we just spoke about the Kyrgyzstan flag. And there it is, painted onto the side of a mountain. <laughs> cool. Beautiful Islamic cemetery here. Look at these buildings. Yeah, very beautiful. Some of these are like, like mini temples, mini palaces. Yeah. Really, really cool. All right, we are finally getting to Lake Isikul. You guys probably can't see it on the GoPro, but we can already see the lake beginning over there in the distance. And we're about 10 minutes from uh, the first spot that we're gonna try. That is a wild camping spot that we found on iOverlander. Uh, it sounds really, really nice. There's a bit of a forest next to the lake, beautiful place to pitch the tent. So we're gonna head there and see if we can find a nice camp for the night. So I think it's supposed to be down here, down this little road on the left. Okay. Is there a road? Is there a road? I think so. Yeah, this little, I, yep, it's just here. Two. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Whee! You. Yeah, uh, I think it's just down this track. Wow. Oh, I love it already. Wow, look at this place. Hello, horsies. 
Oh yeah, wow, there's horses everywhere. Wow, amazing, absolutely amazing. Wow, wow. here we are, this is it. Cool, look, people are swimming. Lake is it cool, ladies and gentlemen. Cool. Look at this. Amazing. <laughs> Hi. Hi. <laughs> wow, cool, amazing place. And there's just like horses everywhere and like families having picnics. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> so apparently we can camp anywhere on this side yeah. in between the trees. Okay, cool. Yeah, so I think we've just got to kind of pick a spot. Let's have a look. <laughs> there's, there's, a kid, there's a child driving the truck. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> oh, how about, how about we pitch up here? Okay. All right, yes. So whilst Lavi's doing all the hard work setting up the camp, I thought I'd tell you guys a little bit about this amazing lake in front of us, Lake Isikul. So this is actually the seventh deepest lake in the world, and it's the 10th largest lake in the world by volume. It's really interesting because the name Isikul means warm water, and that's due to the fact that it's actually a salt water lake, and so actually it never freezes. And it's salty because it has no outflow. So it's actually the second largest inland body of salt water in the world behind the Caspian Sea and the largest mountain lake in the world behind Lake Titicaca. So it's a pretty impressive lake. Absolutely amazing that we could come here on our first day in Kyrgyzstan and camp just there in front. Amazing. Good evening guys, we made it! Happy to live! Yes! Woo! And we got our camp set up here, the tent right here, our beautiful climate camping chairs, which just to add another dimension to the camping experience. I mean, look at this. Oh, it's so amazing, man. It's so amazing. I can't believe this spot here. It's like the best spot ever. I just found a hairband on the ground and I'm like, oh, let's try it. if I can do it already. And yes. Wow, it's the first time since yeah. like, <laughs> since, since Africa. Yes. Wow. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> so it was a pretty long day in the end. I think we were on and off the bike for more than 10 hours today. We crossed the border, we rode over 260 miles, we visited a tourist attraction, and now we're here at the Gem of Kyrgyzstan, and it's just been a really full-on day, but a really nice day. Yeah, it is absolutely amazing that we can camp here tonight, you know, surrounded by so much epic nature. It's a really nice scene as well to see the local life, you know, kids running around and people are swimming. It's just, it's just really nice. So that's it from us today. We hope you enjoyed the video if so please give us a thumbs up subscribe to the channel share the video with your friends and family comment below and we will see you next time <laughs> no that, but the kazakh way is like a little bit softer <laughs>